top of the news this week, Meta has released their second generation of the Llama model. This model is 100% open source. It's a significant upgrade from the previous edition of Llama. The context length has been doubled to 4,096 tokens, the same context length actually as ChatGPT in the browser. There's a few different options for model size parameters. The smaller the model size, right, the worse the performance. The larger the parameter count, the better the performance will be. But the trade-off is that you'll need much more infrastructure to run a 70 billion parameter model, whereas a 7 billion parameter model might be something you can run locally. Llama 2 seems to outperform GPT-3. However, Llama 2 does not perform well on coding tasks. It's going available through AWS, Hugging Face, and most importantly, through Azure. Meta has announced a partnership with Microsoft and will be running their AI infrastructure primarily using Azure, which is a huge deal. This is really like a meeting of the giants. These are two of the most powerful tech companies with the most resources in the AI space and a partnership between them is a super big deal. I think the most interesting thing about Llama 2 is the extent to which they performed RLHF, reinforcement learning through human feedback. Again, that's the kind of tuning that took GPT-3 to the level of performance we see in chat GPT. Meta basically took two different directions in their RLHF. One team focused on helpfulness. Helpfulness is literally just the helpfulness of the response of an LLM model. A very helpful response is when it answers your question in exactly the way you want it to be answered. And an unhelpful response is, I don't know, or I can't answer that. Another team focused on safety. So safety is a model not crossing bounds that it's not supposed to maybe not entering unethical areas, writing stuff like hacking type code or answering phishing requests. What Meta found was that as the helpfulness of a model improves, the safety declines. And as the safety of a model improves, the helpfulness declines. This is definitely a signal that we're going to be seeing this kind of balancing act in the training and development of LLMs between helpfulness and safety. Different companies are going to opt for different balances of helpfulness and safety. We have like on one end of the spectrum, a BARD type model for those of you that have used it. It is very safe. It's also sometimes very unhelpful. Bard, of the biggest LLMs out there right now, I personally have found is the most common to say, I can't answer that question. Other end of the spectrum, this is not an enterprise LLM, but it is an LLM called Worm that was created by hackers. Worm basically is built for phishing attempts. It's extremely helpful and it's very, very unsafe. It'll answer basically any question you give. If you want to try Llama out yourself, you can download it and you can run it locally. Other big news, Apple is making a chatbot. This is a big deal because Apple basically has one of the biggest, most interacted with chatbots in the world, Siri. And Siri can be a little frustrating sometimes. And you can imagine a world where Siri is running on a GPT-like backend and it actually becomes extraordinarily helpful and it is less likely to say, I'm sorry, I can't help you with that. Or there's some like error in the processing, right? And it's a super user-friendly experience and you interact with it through voice. I'm looking forward to that coming to us soon. We don't have a lot of news, unfortunately, about this LLM. We know that it's running on a new framework framework called Ajax that Apple is doing this research using Google Cloud and software called Google Jax. And it makes sense that we don't have a lot of news from Apple yet. Their product quality tends to be very high. Their reputation, their safety of their products tends to be very high. We're very early in the era of GPT-like models. We don't really understand the safety that well yet. Microsoft and Bing can get away with it, but it, that could be a very poor reflection on Apple's reputation. It's unsurprising that Apple is focusing on safety first, and they might be waiting for the space to mature a little bit because they want to be sure that when they do eventually release a GPT-like chat interface, Gen AI capabilities, that it's as safe as possible. This past Tuesday, I went to a Gen AI conference in DC brought to us by Google. Some interesting announcements there. I think the biggest trend that we see, Google is focusing on this idea of the fastest growing programming language being English. The idea is that by enabling developers with Gen AI, developers don't need to know a coding language and instead people can start coding in English because you can make natural language requests to models, which will generate text output. Other news is that Palm2L, which is Google's most powerful Palm2 model in the Google suite, it's known as Unicorn. Right now, Bison is the most powerful, basically the version of Palm2 with the most parameters coming very soon. Some enterprise customers are using it already. Google says that this Unicorn model performs on par with GPT. Another cool Google Vertex AI feature that was not announced at this conference, but was demoed a little bit was an enterprise search-like function 
function. For those of you that know anything about vector databases, basically you can give an AI your own documents. You can train it on your own documents, your own websites, and then you can go back and you can query that intelligently and get an LLM generated response. Google is offering a product that lets you do this and it uses their state of the art crawlers. I mean, it's google.com. They have the best web crawlers out there and they have the best search indexing out there. So to be able to tap into that for your own enterprise search could be pretty cool. Meta and Qualcomm have teamed up to run big AI models on small devices. So Qualcomm is a hardware chip manufacturer and these chips go into smartphones, tablets, laptops, automotive electronics, smartwatches, other wearables, wireless networking equipment, IoT devices, AR, VR devices. This partnership basically tells us that there's the potential for AI chips, things like TPUs to be in literally everything. Not only is there going to be excellent cloud LLM type Gen AI, it's also going to be available at the local level. That means it's going to be more affordable. We're going to have AI chips in our own devices so we can run models on our own devices. We don't have to be so necessarily worried about cloud costs, latency, stuff like that. I'm really excited to see what kind of chips are coming out and what kind of models are enabled on small devices. Quick news, Meta also announced a model recently called Chameleon. It looks like CM3 Leon. This is a text to image generation model. It uses a different kind of technology that we haven't seen so much in the past at the enterprise level. So models like the ones from Midjourney and the ones from OpenAI use a technique generally called stable diffusion. And Meta has focused on a token-based autoregressive approach. The consequence of this is more expensive training, which we don't care about. We're the end user. We don't care how much effort it takes to train these types of models. More expensive training and less compute power. So they're claiming five times less compute than previous transformer-based stable diffusion type methods, which on our end, that means lower costs for using text to image generation models, which is good to see. Thanks you all for tuning in this week. Tune in next week for another episode of This Week in the Future.